Welcome to Microcontrol Systems Online Training Facility. This particular module deals with MCS problem solving. This presentation will discuss solving problems using information provided by the MCS Magnum. Some forms of information recorded are a print to file, an alarm information, and graphs. The print to file is a spreadsheet showing the current status of the Magnum. Alarm info are individual alarms that caused circuits to trip and it is the last 30 seconds associated with that circuit as it was going down. Graphing data is being done continuously in the Magnum and the graph allows you to look at the interaction of data. We will review solving the following two problems. Problem one is unsafe oil and no amps alarm. Problem two, we were seeing the suction superheat hunting continuously. Both of these are actual problems that recently occurred in the field and they were solved by using the data provided out of the Magnum. Unsafe oil and no amps. We have a print to file, which as I mentioned is a spreadsheet of the current status within the Magnum. And we also have an uh, info screen printout from an alarm showing the unsafe oil and no amp status just prior to its occurrence. This is a copy of the print to file. It is a spreadsheet showing the current status of the Magnum. It is about three and a half pages in length. The top first portion shows the installation. The next portion shows sensor input information. The next section shows relay output information. Then the following pages would show control status, set points, alarms, etc. This is an expansion of the header portion which shows you that this data was pulled on Monday, October the 10th, 2011 at 12.30 in the afternoon. It is from the San Diego Museum and we're currently running HVAC 0703R. This is additional information contained in the header. This is a portion of the alarms. There are 100 alarms stored in the Magnum and I have printed out just the first 15 so that they are large enough that you can see them on the screen. The first one is the low amp no start. This means that we fired our relay but in fact the compressor never started. It was at the same time had an unsafe oil because the timing was exactly the same for both alarms. And then the unit had been locked out and somebody reset that lockout about 10 seconds before. Going down to alarm number six, you'll see that an unsafe oil had occurred on circuit two about a week prior to that at about 3.41 in the morning. Okay, this is an information printout from an alarm. You will notice that I have only given you the first 15 seconds of information. There were 30 seconds available, but I used only the first 15 so they were large enough on the screen. The suction pressure never changed, the discharge pressure never changed, the oil differential never changed, and there were no amps that were ever drawn. So while we fired our relay, there was obviously no control power because we never saw the compressor start. So what do we do? If we have no amps, there is something mechanical holding off the power to the common of our relay. It could be a high discharge mechanical switch. It could be the motor overload. It could be a circuit breaker. So you need to go back and pull the wiring diagram to find out what items 
of a mechanical nature are in front of our relay where the control power is going through before it gets to our relay. The next problem is our suction superheat was hunting. We have a graph showing the interaction of data that helps us to analyze what the problem was. Looking at this graph, what you can see is that the compressor is on and the liquid injection is on and then the liquid injection goes off. So during the time frame that the liquid injection is on, you will notice that we are at about 180 degrees. Liquid injection is on and it drives us down and we shut down at about 170 degrees discharge temperature. However, if you continue across, you will see that even after we shut it off, it continued to drive the discharge temperature down to about 160 degrees. So we had a drift of over 10 degrees. Now if I go to an expanded scale of exactly the same time frame, you will see that the suction pressure was going up slightly and then when liquid injection went off it came down. And you will also notice that the electronic expansion valve was fairly flat and then as the suction temperature kept diving that the liquid injection or the electronic expansion valve was racing to keep up with it so that it could maintain the right level of superheat. So our problem is when the liquid injection comes on, it drives the discharge temperature down in 1 minute and 15 seconds from 180 to 170. Then because of the large amount of refrigerant, it goes down another 10 degrees to 160 degrees F. So our problem is that the liquid injection is open way too much, feeding too much liquid in, and consequently we're overshooting where we want to be. Liquid injection should in fact come on and run for 5 to 10 minutes to drive the temperature down 10 degrees. And there should be very little drift once it has reached its goal. The next thing we saw was that the suction temperature and the suction superheat are going down. Okay, the solution is to modulate the liquid injection so it brings down the discharge temperature at a slower pace and has very little overshoot. In this particular case, there was no throttling mechanism on the, on the liquid injection like there normally is. Rather, it was a ball valve that had been installed, and the ball valve was allowing way too much refrigerant when the liquid injection came on to get into the motor. So after we adjusted the liquid injection, what we now see is we move the, the starting point up to 185, and you'll see the liquid injection comes on, and over a period of time drives it down to 175, which is 10 degrees, and then we have about a 1 degree overshoot. At the same time, you'll see the suction pressure is now very steady. So we bring the, the discharge temperature down gradually, and we get no effect on the suction pressure. And then if you look at the EXV, you'll see that it is flat. Okay, so this graph is just an exploded view showing you that same information. This is the suction pressure, and you'll see that it was constantly rising the whole time. You'll see that the suction temperature is now not moving, and the electronic expansion valve is steady. 
So we have in fact eliminated the hunting of the electronic expansion valve. Okay, so now when the liquid injection comes on, it drives the temperature down in 7 to 12 minutes depending on the load, and the overshoot is usually less than 1 degree. Next we see the suction temperature remains steady to within about a half a degree. So by analyzing the interaction of data, we can pinpoint the problem and resolve it. If you have any questions, call MCS at 239-694-0089.